Look at that. That is a piece of American history. The greatest battle implement ever devised per General Patton. And I would have to agree, honestly. I really would. Yes, we are talking about the M1 Garand. Garand, if you want to be politically correct, but we all know here on this channel that we're not, and this is America last time I checked. So it's the M1 Garand. This specific model is a Springfield, which I think is the best and the most original. Winchester and Harris, Harrington Richards and or Richardson International Harvester um, as well as many others have made these but I think if you really want a real M1 Garand in my opinion it's a Springfield and this is not the Springfield Armory of today the Springfield Armory of today is somebody who donates money to anti-gun politicians they don't make a single gun that they sell. Their 1911 frames are made in Brazil, so it's basically a Taurus. Their M1As are outsourced. All their XD pistols are Croatian. And everything they make, in my opinion, is garbage. But that's just my opinion. You guys might like them, but regardless of if their guns are any good or not, I don't like them because of their political actions. Plus, it affects me. I'm in the state of Illinois, as are they, and they're screwing over local gun shops and all the citizens and patriots and freedom-loving Americans in the state of Illinois by the actions that they're pursuing. And if you don't know about it, look into it. You know, it might change your mind. But uh, this is the original Springfield Armory, the real Springfield Armory, not nowadays modern Springfield Armory. So this is the real deal. This is the acceptable deal. This is the real Springfield, okay? This specific gun, per the serial number, was manufactured in April of 1945. So I do not believe that it's seen World War II. However, it is very likely that it has been in the Korean War. Um, I would almost bet my bottom dollar on it. The sling that it has seems to be of Korean nature. And that came with the rifle. We'll give you a look at the rifle in a second here. But first, a little bit, if you guys are communists and uh, don't know anything about the M1 Grand, one of my favorite rifles ever, uh, one of the most historic rifles ever, especially if you're an American citizen, let's go over a little bit of brief history, first of all. It's been in service since 1936 through 1959, okay? It was the first semi-automatic rifle for military adoption ever as far as I'm concerned and you know it, it, it like I said it was the standard US service rifle from 1936 to 1959 it saw World War II the Korean War a little bit in the Vietnam War a little bit in the Iran and Iraq War the Gulf War and a bunch of others I mean it's it's been around the block it's definitely been around the block it's been there it's done that the design was made up in 1928 by John C. Garand. He's a Canadian. Not much good comes out of Canada, but this did. And uh, again, the proper pronunciation is Garand, but in America we call it the Garand, the M1 Garand, and that's what I'm going to call it because that's what it is to me. Like it or hate it, I don't care. It's produced by Springfield, again, Winchester, Harrington, and Richardson, International Harvester, a bunch of other companies. From some of my readings, it even said Beretta produced some of these. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's kind of cool, you know, Beretta being one of the oldest firearms manufacturers in history. They definitely make a solid gun, a solid firearm, whether it be a shotgun, a rifle, a handgun. You know, they, they know what they're doing, so... I wouldn't put it past them. A couple of specs on the gun. The weight is anywhere from 9.5 pounds to 11.6 pounds. The overall length, 43.5 inches, and the barrel length is a 24-inch gun. And it's big and it's heavy. It's made out of wood and steel. How a gun should be made. Now, yeah, all the modern polymers and the this and the that, and it's lightweight and it's easier to produce and it's cost effective and it's quicker to produce and this that and the other 
a firearm, in my personal opinion, should be made out of wood and steel. Look at that. Look at that. This being one of my favorite and one of the best firearms ever made, in my opinion, is made exactly how it should be. I'm a big 1911 guy. I'm a big revolver guy. Those are both made out of steel and wood. The gun is steel, the grips are wood. In this case, it's a rifle, so the gun is steel, and the grips, the stock, is wood. What else do you need? How better looking can it be? How more functional can it be? And how better made could it be? I don't want this made out of plastic. I don't. I don't want this made out of aluminum. I don't. And it's not, thank God. It's a gas-operated rotating bolt gun. A lot of other guns today have been inspired by it. The M1A, the 308 variant of this. It's a box-fed magazine variant, you know, for all intents and purposes. And, you know, like the Ruger, the Ruger, the Ruger Mini 14, the Mini 30, those types of guns. Um, you know, if you're, if you're at all familiar with modern YouTube gun channels, Garantham, got to watch out for that. That comes from, on the M1 Grand, the way that it's loaded. So you feed your M block clip in there. Which technically it's not a clip, it's just an end block is how it's known. But you feed it in there, and then most of the time when you feed it in there, the bolt will automatically go home. So there's a, a specific technique, you kind of hold the bolt back, push it in there, and then let it go, or sometimes you have to push it forward. But by just pushing it in there without holding the bolt back, it'll catch your thumb. And that's where Grand Thumb comes from. So if you're a fan of his channel, you've watched his channel, you subscribe to his channel... That's where the phrase comes from. Beautiful gun. Let's say we got the butt pat. Um, this did not come with the cleaning accoutrements in the little butthole, which is unfortunate, but the stock is gorgeous. I don't know if it's original or not. It's in really good shape. Take a look at if we can get it in focus. Springfield. Again, the serial number dates it to being a 1945 April produced gun. Operat is great on it. You know, it came with a sling. Sling's nice. The bore's good on it. It's not the best bore I've ever seen for an M1 Grand, but it definitely is not shot out. I did shoot this so far, and it drives tax. It's a very good shooter. It's reliable. Haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. On an M1 Grand, you do want to shoot M1 Grand specific ammunition because some modern ammunition in, in certain loadings, especially hunting loadings or defensive loadings, hotter loadings, you can bend your op rod because back then these guns weren't designed to take you know the, the powders and the pressures of modern, modern ammunition. So kind of got to watch out. You'll probably be fine with just standard 30-06 ball, which is what this is chambered for, 30-06 if you didn't know. Real nice hard hit and cartridge. It could really, you know, make the distance. It'll go far and hit hard. Um, but you, you kind of got to watch it with modern loads for that. What's funny is the cost during World War II for my research was about 85 bucks for one of these rifles. And now today, on the very, very, very low end, it's about 600 bucks, and then it goes all the way up depending on who made it, what year it was made, what it comes with, how original it is. Most of these guns have been rebarreled. This one has been. Um, I forget the exact year that it was rebarreled, but it definitely has been rebarreled. The receiver obviously is, is original. I don't know if the stock is. The stock looks pretty nice for it to be original, but you never know. But it's really, really hard to get a completely original rifle. It basically has to be unmolested. It hasn't been rebarreled. It's got the original stock. And a lot of these guns were used. They were used to fight wars. So, you know, they were in harsh conditions. They were thrown around, dropped, beat up, used, shot a bunch. You know, so it's rare to get a completely original as-issued rifle. And if you do find one, you're definitely going to pay for it. Definitely. Either way, the collectability is still there no matter what. The CMP offers a bunch of different grades as far as buying these. 
you can get your curio and relic license and buy them or you can buy them used from a gun shop or wherever it may be but you know there's field grade there's hand picked you know there i forget what the names are for all of them but i would say this one's pretty good it's definitely above a field grade um there's rat grade um you know there's a bunch of different gradings but the stock on this is gorgeous the sling is nice you know it works it's functional it's there there's a little bit of rust on it but i mean how old is the thing you know it's very old the barrel again was rebarreled let's see if we can get a look at that it was rebarreled you know the bluing's worn off of it you know it's got a little bit of pitting going on but what do you want for a rifle that's been there and done that and is this old I think it's awesome. It's super collectible. It's something I grew up watching on TV and in the movies and old TV shows. It's literally America's rifle. If you had to put one rifle to the good old US of A, it, I would guarantee it would be this one. Maybe nowadays the AR-15, most people would say, because it's most common. That's what most people know. But to true historians, you know, people that are, are truly patriots and know where we've come from to where we are now, this is what started it all. World War II is probably one of the biggest, most important, influential conflicts we've ever been in. And uh, this is what did it. Super cool. Super cool. I love it to death. Love it to death. And what's cool, too, is it's still being used. Maybe not in service. I've heard reports of some of these things being dusted off and brought into battle into Iraq and Afghanistan and stuff like that for a longer-range weapon. You know, because either they didn't have enough M14s or, or M1As or things like that, and, and they dusted these things off and maybe converted them or something. I could be wrong. I read that. I don't know if the source is correct or not. Let me know in the comments down below if, if it is or not. But they're still being used by drill teams and and honor guards. You know, if, if a military veteran dies and they, they give them the old 21-gun salute, this is what they're using. There's a lot of heritage behind that. It's classic. It's traditional. You know, and a lot of men died with this rifle in their hands, and a lot of men died because other men had this rifle in their hands. It's an awesome rifle, and just to be able to own it, and to pick it up and hold it, and run the action, and just experience what it felt like, and to shoot it, I mean, it's super nostalgic. It really brings you back. You can only imagine what it was like. You know, storming Normandy Beach with something like this. Carrying the, the big heavy gun and all the ammo and the end blocks and, and the bandolier that you would keep it in. You know, just different stuff like that. I mean, compared to nowadays and, and modern guns, modern ammunition, modern magani, magani's, magazines and things like that. I mean, it, it, it's mind-blowing. It's crazy and it's so freaking cool. Like, it's it's... I don't even have words to describe it. When I when I bought this thing, I was so happy to have it. I didn't even care if the bore was shot out, which it's not. But even if it was, I would have paid what I paid for this just to hang it over the fireplace because it's gorgeous. It's a piece of American history, and I'm happy to have it no matter what. But thankfully, the bore on it's good. It's functional. It's reliable. And I took it out and shot it, and I enjoyed every single freaking second of it. And it shot really well. And just the after the eighth round fired, you get the ping from the end block popping out and dropping on the ground. It's so so classic, so world renowned. Everybody knows what that is from just the sound alone. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I can't begin to put into words the amount of respect I have for this rifle. And all the men that carried it. And all the conflicts that they fought with this. Me as a civilian, as just a regular old dude who loves guns, who loves the history of it. Who owns guns for life and liberty and defense and hunting and, and sporting purposes and just fun and just collecting. And This is a mainstay in any patriotic American's collection. You need a Smith & Wesson revolver, a Colt 1911, you need an AR-15, you need a good Model 12 or an Ithaca shotgun, you need an M1 Garand. I mean, it does not get more American than this. And this, shout out to Scott from Nepa Gun Talk. He recently sent me a, a little goodie bag, a care package 
this was in it. I think this is absolutely awesome. It's a little bandolier. You see caliber 30, ball M2, 8 round clips, LC 42, 489, 489 excuse me. And, and then on the back, produced November, uh, or that's an M, produced October of 67. I don't know what the MOV stands for, but this is real. Lake City Ball ammo in the original M blocks, in the original cardboard holders for this gun, in the original bandolier. Now, this bandolier is produced much later than uh, the primary service of this gun was. However, it was still out there, it was still getting it done, and this is super cool. This is more like you know, Korea, Vietnam era stuff right here, but it's awesome. This is real military gear. This is a real military gun. This is the real military uh, sling. And to have this makes me speechless. It, it, it's a flashback in time. It means a lot. And I appreciate it, Scott, dude. That's that's absolutely awesome. This is so freaking cool. You cannot even believe that I have this with my M1. I love this rifle. I'm so happy to have this rifle. Just for a collector piece, you know, as well as a shooter. I'm not going to shoot it too much. I'm not going to beat her up. I've definitely ran some rounds through her, though, and she shoots great. I mean, I would have no qualms to run out the door and fight the revolution with this gun and this bandolier. Because I know how to run it. They're easy to run. They're reliable. You can shoot 800 yards with it. It's a 30 out 6 It's a super capable caliber. Extremely accurate. Very simple. And it's rugged. It's rugged. It's proven. It's reliable. And all the history and the heritage. To go down fighting with one of these, one of these in your arms. That's got to be an honor in and of itself. I mean really if you look into it. The history behind this gun itself there there's so many good documentaries out there about the m1 grand you know and, and all the troops that fought with it there's so many historical events that happened with guys that had this in their arms i mean it's it's an excellent rifle even to this day and it sure as hell was back in the day and i am sure as hell extremely proud and happy and excited to have one in my own personal collection and i highly advise that if you have the opportunity to get one do a little research, don't overspend, but definitely put one of these in your collection. It is well worth every penny. That's the video, guys. Not too much history, not too much blabbering, hopefully. I'm super excited to have it. I hope you guys are excited to see the video because it's not every day you get to see these. You know, I walked into my local shop, it just happened to be there, and I said I want it. It's gorgeous. Let me, let me give you more of a look at the gun here. You can see it's worn. The bluings come off. It's got a little bit of pitting going on. We've got sling mounts, the bayonet mount. Look at the action. You know, it's slick. It's smooth. It's fully operational. Again, Springfield, the real Springfield. It says U.S. Rifle. If I can get that into uh, focus there. And it sure is. There's your safety. That's safe. Forward is fire. Probably shouldn't be dry firing that, but I don't want the uh, the spring tension building up. The stock. The butt plate where you put the cleaning supplies back here. I'm not going to pop it open because I've busted plenty of fingernails trying to get these things open before. But just the overall beauty of the gun. It's just gorgeous. It's in really good shape for how old it is. And the fact that it's still functional just as the day that it was produced is beyond belief. It's a super solid gun. Super collectible gun. Super historic gun. Let me say super one more time. But, I mean, I really can't get it through to you guys how important this is as an American to have one of these in my collection. And how proud it makes me. And how much enjoyment I have of just looking at it, just feeling it, just touching it, just holding it. That one of our troops might have been fighting for freedom in another country 
and putting his life on the line with this very same rifle how many years ago. That means the world to me. And in reality, I may never know. But the thought of it is what counts. This is super awesome, Scott. Thanks again. This is definitely going to be put to use. It's definitely going to be part of the collection. And anytime I bring this bad girl out, this is coming with. And uh, I don't know what else to say, guys. I appreciate you guys sticking around, watching the video. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know if you guys got an M1 Grand. Let me know if you shoot them, what ammo it likes. You know, what ammo you shoot as far as modern day goes. Check out all the links in the description box below as always. And thank you for watching the video, and we'll catch you on the next one.